right now we're behind the temple, we're on 15th Street behind the Scottish Rites Temple. And we're gonna talk about the masonry and the African connections of this, this temple. George G.M. James said that in these temples the earliest theory of salvation was taught. It was taught that if a human being is liberated from the embodying impediments and fetters, it could enable them to be godlike and see the gods and the lifestyle and attain the beatific vision and hold communion with the immortals. To modern scholars, this became to be the Egyptian mystery system. The Egyptian mystery system, like modern universities of today, was the center of organized culture. Their curriculum or education consisted of ten vir virtues and seven, li seven liberal arts, which were intended for eternal happiness and to liberate their soul. The seven liberal arts were grammar, rhetoric, logic, geometry, uh, arithmetic, astronomy, and music. The ten virtues were control of thought, control of action, steadfastness, steadfastness, and the perp of the purpose, identity of spiritual life or higher ideals, evidence of having a mission in life, evidence of a call to spiritual orders, freedom of resentment, confidence in the power of the master, confidence of one's own ability to learn, and readiness and preparedness for an initiations. The pyramid shape, just like on a dollar bill, means the cultivation and enlightenment of the mind. When the Greeks got a hold of this knowledge and Alexander invaded Egypt and looted the Nubians and their libraries or records, they opened up their own schools and called them lodges in Greece and other places outside of Africa. At this time for the record, the Grand Lodge of ancient times was the Luxor Temple. It is situated in Egypt and had had jurisdiction over all lodges and schools of the ancient world. They were still being run by Nubian or African Egyptian priests. As you can see, the same ancient Nubian knowledge was able to survive and resurface in the United States.